I think in the past, people tend to be overly optimistic about the macro situation in China and overly pessimistic about the micro situation in China. I think going forward, this, this needs to be reversed. In other words, I do think there are a lot of macro challenges, but at the same time, at the micro level, because of the market changes, I actually think for you know, MNCs or local companies, there are a lot of opportunities. Certainly in China, the, the, the rising middle class has, is already creating and will continue to create a significant demand base for more sophisticated products. So whereas you know, in, the, in, in the past, uh, China is basically for mass market consumer products. Going forward, we actually think that niche products or products in niche categories could actually become a viable play in China. Whereas before, a lot of MNCs and local companies have to put those categories aside because the cost parameters, the economic equation does not work. Going forward with a significant middle class base, we actually think a lot more categories will become viable in China. Uh, if you look at the mainstream consumer base, uh, underpinning that consumption. In the past decade, this is really what I would call G1 consumer, essentially a consumer like me, who were born in the 60s, in the 70s, who essentially grew up with some kind of insecurity in their overall environment, right? So that basically defined the consumption in China in the past decade or even before that. Essentially a lot of volume, uh, a lot of you know, price comparison, trying to make sure that we are getting the best deal. At the same time, you know, we're not sophisticated, right? We did not grow up with a consuming society. We still, we are still learning the ropes, if you will, in the past decade in how to become a qualified, sophisticated consumer. Whereas going forward, I think this, again, demographic underpinning of the Chinese consumption will actually go through some very significant changes. We're beginning to see the emergence, what we call the G2 consumers, the generation two consumers, gradually becoming the mainstream consumers in the next, next decade and also beyond. So we're talking about people born after 1985, in the 1990s or even later. So these consumers grew up in a very, very different material environment. Essentially, they already came into this world with a lot of things prepared for them in their households. In many cases, they're the only child in a family. So everything is taken care of them, taken care of for them. And so therefore, they come into the mainstream sort of consumer uh, faces in their life already with a very critical view of what they want and also what they think is high quality. So you can no longer necessarily impose a, uh, a, a mainstream standard, if you will, to these consumers. You would rather have to adapt to what these consumers already want based on their life experiences in the early stages of their life. So I think what we are seeing from consumer research is that this generation two consumers are much more confident. They have much stronger demand for individualized products, tailored products. And also I think in a, in a lot of ways, these G2 consumers are actually more similar to the global consumers in the sense that they would actually be much more interested in buying products based on emotional value, based on uh, cultural identification, rather than just, um, you know, it's a good deal, it's a great price, which is really the case for generation one consumer. And I think the G2 consumers will perhaps place, relatively speaking, more weight on product features that really caters to individual needs and also the emotional benefit of the brands. So that again would change the landscape if you really look at it from a manufacturing and also competition among you know, consumer goods company standpoint in the sense that it's not only you know, cost or your ability to drive distribution that's going to support a successful consumer brand. It is more about thinking about product designing, thinking about product innovation, uh, product development that can really cater to this new G2 consumers and also then at the same time uh, develop innovative ways to communicate with these G2 consumers. So we're talking about potentially an expanded product brand portfolio and certainly SKU breadths as well. So how do you address the complexity, the system complexity coming out of this expanded product portfolio while trying to tap into this G2 consumers will be an interesting challenge for the consumer goods companies going forward.